Welcome to episode 13 of Devil's Trap Podcast. I'm Diana. I'm Liz. And this is our Snowpocalypse episode. And we're going to talk about robes and lords and dudes and bros. And also emotionally unavailable men. And a lot about cars. Be sure to smash the like button, bro. Episode 13 of Devil's Trap Podcast. And uh, that's what we are. Yeah, we're, we're Devil's are. Trap Podcast. Did you forget <laughs> that we're a podcast? <laughs> no. The show is eating your brain so much. You're like, what, what is this thing we're doing? Everything is frozen. Um, yeah. So we're uh, both in the frozen tundra that they used to call Texas. Um, and so uh, we're going to see uh, if we can make it through our recording this week and get this uh, up for you guys. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. Hey, so trying not to jinx shit here. I have had power for about three hours now, so we may be able to get this out. Um, And the heat in my house is now up to 60 degrees. So it's warm enough to do this in my onesie. Um, So So I'm in mine in solidarity. I appreciate that. Well, there's also many layers underneath the onesie. So um, yeah. uh, so snow apocalypse, snow I don't know what the hell we want to call it besides just fucking awful. Yeah. Uh, I left there, the East Coast because I don't want to deal with this shit. No. We no. live in Texas, so we don't have to deal with this shit. Like, oh, like, oh, we get a good freeze like every couple of years and oh, haha, and it's gone in a day or two. Not this bullshit. We are not equipped for this. We're signed up for it. And yeah, I'm not happy about no, it. No. I will say, I will say that I feel very, very lucky uh, that we have not had the power issues that Liz has had that I don't want to jinx. So I don't want to say too much, um, but it's still, you know, all the faucets are dripping um, because we uh, set a record in Dallas. Um, it's the um, only the second time ever we've hit negative two since they've started recording Ooh. temperatures in, in Texas. So I think we tied, with, we yeah. tied with a, a, a reading from 1899 or some shit. Uh, it's well, and I do wonder, like, when we go through this stuff and they start pulling out the history date, I'm like, how the hell did you do this in 1899? I mean, mm. like, this, like, I mean, was your log cabin better insulated than my house is? Like, I have, like, everything barreled off. We're stuck yeah. on, like, a couch in front of my fireplace. But now that fireplace is no longer any good because I'm out of wood. Um, oh. I heard one of my friends uh, in northern Dallas said that he's heard people are just going to Lowe's and like buying yeah. wood there. They're buying like- two by fours. They're buying two by fours. I heard some of those. Some of the, I heard uh, the Home Depot by me apparently is willing to cut up the two by four, the untreated ones, obviously. Cutting the, Hopefully two by the fours untreated up. ones. These people are stupid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, like cutting those up and everybody's like, you, if you have gas, people are using their stoves and ovens. And then everybody's freaking out about people using their stoves and ovens. And it's, it's, it's a thing. I mean, we're, yeah. uh, it was supposed to be rolling blackouts and that does not seem to be what has occurred here, but uh, that's a whole other, <laughs> you. Uh, that's a whole other <laughs> conversation. Um, well, they're saying the rolling, the world, the planned rolling blackouts were only supposed to be like 15 to 45 minutes each. That's what I'm saying. Those were, that's oh. not what is, is occur- that, those are not what are occurring at all. Uh, <laughs> no, not lots no. of people out of power for, you know, over 24 hours now um in in these temperatures and uh yeah it's pretty wild yeah i all sorts of fun like my brother who's in uh pflugerville which is northern austin for those of you who don't know um so they've been without power since yesterday but then pflugerville like issued a boil water notice yeah. and then i was like well he's like well we don't really have water anyways so i don't know how the hell i'm supposed to boil it and i was like so what would you boil it on he's like i guess the gas grill like if i really yeah. had to i was like 
That's like there, and then like I've been getting stuff and other people like conserve water. I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna stop dripping my faucet because yeah, no. I'm not gonna be out without power and without water. Like, go fuck yourself. Yeah. Figure out a better emergency plan. <laughs> yeah, there's limit. I, you know, it's so ingrained in us in Texas, especially, and I know other obviously everywhere you're supposed to conserve water, but especially in Texas, I feel like because we always get ingrained, we always have so many droughts and everything else. People are always like conserve water, and they're like turn all the faucets on and just leave them running. It feels very weird. And every time I walk in a room and I like panic a little bit, I'm like, oh, oh shit, I gotta turn the water off. I'm like, oh no, I have to leave it on. It's very difficult. well. No, and also if you don't have power and if things are quiet, then all you hear is. Oh God. They say, they say, I saw somebody, their hack was you put a sponge in your sink to, so it hits that, but I don't have, well, I have it just going into like a stock pot. So I have an extra reserve of just crap water in case I need it for toilets or anything in case things go. Yeah. Um, Yeah, There's a lot of uh, boil water notices going on and yeah, it's it's pretty, it's pretty crazy here. So those of you that are not in Texas, uh, don't just mock us. This is actually a little bit bigger. Because no, this is really serious. serious. Like people serious. are dying. It's really bad. This is don't be like, oh, I can handle this on the East Coast. Yeah, I get it. We've all lived on the East Coast. We don't have the infrastructure for this. This is not and like I literally cannot leave my driveway for until this melts because I don't have a plow. One, I'm not shoveling shit because I said when I left the last time I left the East Coast, I'm like, nope, I am never picking up a snow shovel again. I don't want to do this anymore. So what I'm not I'm not shoveling it, but it's also covered in ice. So I could attempt to four by four it up it, which could be fun. Yeah, we were discussing that. Dave, my husband and I were discussing that for you. And I'm like, but if you slide backwards, that could be so bad. That's that's the thing is slide like backwards my house, into your garage because yeah. her house is at the bottom of the hill. She'd have to drive. Yeah, and so up was the my hill, na- like, and so was my neighbor's house. Yeah. And so they brought me chicken, chicken and dumplings today. Aww. So I don't want to like run into their house. That seems That's like nice a very a bad way. Also, one of them's <laughs> quite elderly. I'm like, haha, you don't have any power and you have a hole in your house. Surprise. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we're just, this is just not, and, and also, I mean, to have this cold of temperature for this extended period of time, is just, you know, it's, there's gonna be a lot of issues, uh, after in the aftermath too, I think. Um, but yeah, so yeah, it's a real quiet, um, wor- so it's a real quiet work week for me <laughs> because so well, many of I- my things that I do and people I work with are Texas based, um, and just musician from the musicians and to the my coworkers and everything else and so we don't have any shows this week anyways since we're running slow with a you know because we have a pandemic going on still too you know of course to just add a layer of fun to everything but <laughs> yep this is so that I also was like well this is real quarantine for I was right. like I'm at least like I've been prepared for this I'm like yeah no I'm used to not leaving my house like this is yeah. pretty standard like I don't go anywhere but um you know trying to figure out like food things and what I'm gonna do but work has been uh, at least my work is very understanding and I'm like I will try and do things um, I can't guarantee if, you know, okay. I did join a, a meeting today in the cat onesie. Uh, <laughs> I did not have video on though. Cause it was with a customer. Oh. Um, if it hadn't been, or if it had been a customer I liked, I would have turned video on. Um, but I'm not saying that I didn't like the, cu- I mean, oh God, that sounds uh, real bad. No. Uh, not that if it I was somebody like, that you had rapport with. Yeah. I, was, would like, well, I had a really that. good relationship with, I would have. Yeah. I, I have had customers join in, uh, in unicorn onesies before. So okay. it's, but which is what Diana is, but I just keep thinking that I am the meme. And so instead of, I am not a cat, <laughs> the, the attorney. I am a cat. I am a cat. And that's, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, claim him. I know I, it was a Texas thing and everybody's mocking it. I say we claim him. I, I'm I happy still don't it. believe it's real. Like I can't, like, I really cannot believe that actually happened. I mean, that's so staged. Uh, I don't know about that. I've seen some interviews with him afterwards. I don't think it yes. <laughs> I, er, I'm not oh, a cat. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> but yeah, so um on that, what are you drinking to stay warm? <laughs> so this is actually the first time I've drank since Sunday. So I don't know what day it is. What day is it? Tuesday. Well, we're recording Tuesday. Yeah. Is it Monday? Tuesday. Is it it's Tuesday. Tuesday. It's Tuesday? I don't know what fucking day it is because <laughs> no, like no. I really because time is like because I keep sleeping for like two hours and then like I wake up like I don't know. Like this no. is the weirdest, this is worse than quarantine time. Yeah. I will it say is. that. Like quarantine Weird. without power. I don't I have no idea what is going on. Um so Sunday when I was making um the dripping candle uh, Valentine's Day cakes. Oh, yeah. I did drink uh, Prosecco with uh, 
pomegranate juice and that was really delicious mm. and but I didn't want to drink yesterday because you know emergency and I'm like no. probably if I'm shit faced and things happen like <laughs> you might not be able to respond and, as quickly or as and also just like you know like I didn't want to like get hypothermia and be yeah. drunk because that yeah. seems like a bad thing but it's only been two days so I made it a day there's always two- tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> or tonight <laughs> um so I am and oh, thankfully yeah. you know I have a fuck ton of wine in this house so uh mm. sadly I didn't have any cider because I wanted to make like a, a a hot cider drink would have been great right now but I am just drinking uh a Pinot Noir from Oregon from that's A to Z and uh I actually it's my favorite Oregon vineyard it's run by a woman and they're just their wines are fucking delicious so that's that's my thing for the evening I'm I'm drinking uh, Dripping Springs vodka with uh, Texas. So drinking that with some uh, it's Zevia. It's the weird, weirdly sweetened sodas, uh, ginger ale, Zevia ginger ale. So it's like they're whatever Stevia sweetened ginger ale. So vodka mule, kinda yeah, and uh, yeah, and 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 also I just want to add on to the layer of fun since this is. Tuesday night right now going into Wednesday is that we do have another layer of snowstorms coming tonight. <laughs> That's fun, right? Overnight, uh, early, early Wednesday morning hours. So, uh, it's gonna stay, stay crazy apparently here. Stay cold. Uh, this just to reiterate, Liz, you always give me shit about how much I love summer. I would like to reiterate the fact that I fucking love summer and winter is bullshit. It should be cold ish on Thanksgiving. And on Christmas, other than that, fuck all this cold noise. It should be summertime. I want cool weather now. Well, I I don't mind Texas winters. You know, I like I like jackets. I, I look good in them. I like I look good in sweaters. Um, I have fat arms, so covering them up like is a good thing for me a lot of times. Although, you know, otherwise I'm just wearing a, like a multitude of black tank tops. Um but also Texas winter is usually like a day or yeah. two weeks. Right. And, you know, it, it's maybe December. There's not, not this crap. So no, fuck this crap. I want summer too. <laughs> um, we will be uh, fleeing the country in 37 no. days. I may not come back. Um, Countdown yep. Countdown is on. Countdown is on until, I don't know, if it, we will record the podcast in Belize. And, oh, man. Uh, <laughs> We're gonna be we're gonna be like loaded on pina coladas. It's gonna be a greatness. <sighs> pina colada. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, I can't wait, and I can't wait to tell you guys about it. We've we've got uh, yeah. There's there's really some good activities. things that's coming. Planned. There's some we're going. We've got a, our favorite boat down there is the fish chisel. Yes. Uh, so we will definitely be sending you pictures of us uh, on our adventures. And then before that, we're going to have another little mini adventure. Oh, we are. We are. In a couple of weeks, uh, once all this bullshit's done, uh, we'll be down. Uh, I'll, uh, we're, I'm going down near, we're closer to Liz's place, but we're going to be out in High, Texas, H-Y-E, um, to go to the High Rum uh, newest release, which is called Dark Arts. And it's Harry Potter theme party for the rum club. I'm excited. And then we also get to pick up all our awesome favorite local wines that we pick up down there from Signor and from Coleman. So it's going to be good times. And we're going to try to make some time so that I can actually get to go for the first time to the Family brewery. business. Family actually, I'm very excited. One of my uh, former uh, coworkers, bosses from New York, uh, I, I Instagram me today because she came down here to visit her her daughter um, and her new grandchildren and got stuck here. But mm. before it got stuck, she was like, oh my God, I just went to the family business. And then I saw oh. like, you live in Dripping. And I was like, oh, it's so great. Um, so hopefully we can get out there. But even if not, I have a new witch hat for the Harry Potter event. <laughs> and if power stays on and it's warm enough, I can actually finish working on the outfit I'm sewing for it. Uh, but is skirts like half done and sitting behind me in this mess back there i just wow. have not wanted to be in anywhere that was not underneath five layers of blankets uh oh, there. i was supposed to take off thursday and friday to go hunting in west texas so clearly not doing that so wow. uh well, animals would be yeah. saved <laughs> lucky lucky wow. bitches um but so I think I'm going to try and keep those days off because I'm terrible even though like technically I kind of have days off right now but I don't really 
it's not the same. It's not the same as officially being off of work. Right. And and when you're stuck on it, like being stuck on your couch underneath blankets, watching TV when the TV is on or reading books when there is no power is a good thing. But also like, like yesterday or it was yesterday or this morning, I'm like, I'm really tired of being under fucking blankets. Yeah, <laughs> like I was fair. like, I want to do other things. That's fair. Yeah. This weekend we were supposed to be taking, um, going to the car club and taking Duchess to her first indoor car show at Dallas Auto Autorama. Um, <gasps> we are waiting to hear if that is occurring or not. Obviously she's not getting a fucking bath beforehand because that not exactly car wash and weather, but, um, Can you give crossed, her a sponge bath kind of in the garage. I've got, I've got some spray. I can do like a light wash all over, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, cause it's not supposed to get above freezing until Friday and we're supposed to bring all the cars on Thursday. So that's. Don't take yeah. that just out on the ice and the we're snow. Not, no, I'm not taking that. No, 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 no. And I'm sure, will, like, I won't. think no, Dallas no, no. may have salt. I don't know. Like, uh, no. the highways are supposed to be pretty decent, but um, I uh, drove, we drove. Like, well, no, but even they're decent. You don't want to take Duchess over salt. salt. No, it's bad for the paint. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's bad for every part of her. Like, no, well, no, yeah. that's our baby does metal. not need it's bad for all the metal. So we'll see. Um, metal. I mean, you never know if it, like, if the sun, if the sunshine comes out tomorrow and <laughs> melts everything down. <laughs> Liz is going metal on us. Um, she was getting way too into the her uh, her uh, Eastern European metal bands last week, apparently, or Scandinavian metal bands. But anyway, so a yeah, Polish we'll one last week. That was a, it was Polish, yeah, so right. Eastern, yeah, Euro- Eastern European. Yeah, I actually don't have a metal band this week. Well, okay, kind of, uh, maybe in the music somewhere. Um, yeah, car, we got a cool car though. I mean, not we really do. A cool so car, this is this is this is know, the car yeah. week. So yeah. all right, let's fucking talk about. Oh, sorry guys that this intro we went so Yay. long, but That's also we're both going nuts. I'm not talking to many people right now. So besides the cat, who really the cat's not talking much either because she's just underneath <laughs> her tortilla blanket and like just very upset about everything that's happening. So okay. So, uh, Route 666. Route 666 and episode 13. This is a 13th episode. That's really, I I don't know if that was intentional or not. If it was clever, clever. Yeah, I remember seeing about what order this is supposed to be in, but I forget. Um, so this was originally aired January 31st, 2006. So we're still kind of kind of timely on this. It was directed by Paul Shapiro. Uh, so the writers on this are uh, Eugene Ross Lemming and Brad Buckner. Uh, so a couple of cool things. One, Eugenie is married to Eric Kripke. Um, so I think that's pretty neat. Uh, she also, uh, not, not married to Eric Kripke. Sorry. sorry. She's married to Bob, Robert Singer, uh, the producer. So she's married to Bobby Singer. Um, but she was also in second city with John Belushi and a bunch of others. Uh, there are theoretically videos of her out there doing it, but they're way archived and I couldn't dig enough to get to them. Um, and frankly, some of the second city skits from 1972, they don't hold up a lot. And I was like, I don't really care enough to go digging through this. I was like, well, I'll just note that. Um, but the script was also commissioned by Eric Kripke, which is why I said his name, after quote unquote losing a script and they needed an emergency script. So they wrote it in a week. So oh. that may be why this is kind of a shitty episode. Um, and there's, I mean, when we'll you know, obviously have our thoughts and opinions about theories of how this episode went but it's in terms of like storylines and stuff it's not the greatest it's a little weak it's a little weak yeah but, but so the, originally it was supposed to be a 42 minute car chase which would have been awesome but they're like we don't have the budget to do that guys which is probably why they're like man i guess you gotta come up with a script they were yeah. probably like We're, we would just want to do a big car chase like nah yeah, yeah. man like, you gotta go there uh so there actually did used to be a Route 666, by the way, uh, and that was an extension of Route 66, which we all know, yeah. um, but they eventually changed the name to Route 491 in 2003 because of the devil, um, and really just because a road sign kept getting stolen, because I would oh, still I was gonna say, I'm like, has everybody stole that shit? That's why. Yeah, I mean... I don't condone stealing government property, but if I saw it, I'd be like, mm. it's just like the, on like, oh, the way to, oh, yeah, weird. On, on the way to Blanco, I think there's a Cox Road sign that I always oh, think of. My husband has a shirtless picture in front of it. Yeah. Okay. That's because your husband's 
take shirtless but no, i'm not kidding he really does take shirtless pictures he collects ever. shirtless photos he's starting to make a, he was going to be a calendar i think we're at the level where he's discussing a coffee table book now i think a coffee table special. book would be pretty brilliant <laughs> and and maybe if we ever go to patreon that can be one of the things that you can reach a certain <laughs> level you can get a coffee table book of Ooh. diana's husband without her shirt on <laughs> It's, it's i'm not saying i'm not gonna talk random about places like around the world it's, it's usually he tries to do it in interesting locations and fun poses so yeah there we go. uh do we want to talk about the cast thing now or do you want yeah, to wait go ahead and, we can go ahead and jump into cast because actually i have a, a, a side note on one of them i don't um yeah. the um the first person we see in this episode really is jimmy anderson okay and he's the one driving the car getting they get that's getting chased at the very beginning of this episode yeah. Um, and, uh, the character's name, uh, the actor's name is Alvin Sanders and he actually is pops in Riverdale, which is a show I watch. So, uh, I thought that I was like, wait a minute, I know that guy. And so there's that. And then I know the cast part you want to talk about. Well, that's Cassie. And mm -hmm. so, uh, Cassie is played by Megalyn. Y Good Lord. I can't say her last name. I, I don't want to butcher it. I can walk. Wokey, I could. Sorry, Megalyn. Um, if that's how you say your first name. I, your your last name is difficult. Um, e C H I K U N W O K E. So yeah, Akuna Woke. Uh, you must have had a bitch of a time at elementary school, man. You, yeah. Kudos to you. Um, so she did play Angie in that '70s show, but also while I was while I was doing my notes on this I knew that Diana was working her way through Buffy and I, I was like wait which episode are you on and she's like I'm on season seven episode 11 I'm like okay when you get to episode 13 you gotta watch the characters in it and yep. she was in episode 13 as Vaughn and I honestly have I don't remember what she did in that show she, she was a witch um, she was part of the coven she was part of the of um the coven that uh, Willow had left the coven with, and finds the coven to help them yeah with, with yeah. uh with bitch faces uh mm. whatever her name is um amy right? amy amy, yeah. amy the rat yeah rat rat amy yeah right she also yeah. um megalyn was also on a show called almost family last year which was a very mediocre with a slightly interesting but disturbing premise uh i believe that was on like fox or something but basically this uh and it's a fairly well-known actress as well but anyways the premise is that uh a fertility doctor whose daughter was following in his footsteps to run the fertility business had used his own sperm to knock up a bunch of people and she had a bunch of brothers and sisters she didn't know about creepy it was but it was a sitcom but it was like a, a semi it was, but it like was a dramedy a <laughs> it was very it was very he was like getting charged with like you know you know sexual assault anyways it was very it was very bizarre it was trying to be like this like good-hearted like <laughs> Good hearted fun the, where I about the about the about these siblings after the fact and their interaction and their, them getting their lives together with together and figuring it out, but also it was really fucking dark because of that. So uh, it didn't. I don't think it. Lasted. But hilarious, you know. Yeah, not. <laughs> It was, it, was a, it was awkward man it was not, yeah, I'm like, yeah. I don't know. I'm like i was like oh this could be okay, unless she's on i'm like what the fuck this is well it's kind of like what happened with firefly lane last week and i don't know like you may not watch it because this is the one of the things where one i don't care about spoiling this dog dies in it guys so if you don't watch a show want to watch a show where a dog dies don't watch yeah. firefly lane because yeah. the, i don't understand why netflix does not have that in like they're like oh they're smoking in this i don't give a shit that they're smoking the dog dies yeah. tell me the because i'm not gonna watch that that's nope. a fair warning I, I won't watch it because you told me that because yep. so you're gonna ruin their ratings and it's gonna be all your fault and that's okay because they shouldn't kill a fucking dog there we go it, yeah it was and part of it well, like, i agree with you. why is that, really why well is that not the warning why is that not the warning? Nope, it oh, should be there's there's suggestive language fuck your that's suggestive language like, tell I me mean, that the pet dies i don't know or yeah. the animal dies whatever it is i don't yeah that's not right. Oh, yep. Yeah, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> so we start off. Um, the episode does open in, in Cape Girardeau, or however you say that, Missouri. But so a couple of things about that. One, the radio on the weather is talking about an unseasonable cold front, which I was like, mm. timely. Mm -hmm. This is not unseasonable, but just a shitty cold front. But this was actually supposed to take place. I saw in one place said Louisiana, but another one said Polly, Mississippi. They said, yeah, Mississippi is where they said they're going to find yeah. Cassie. So it was where she called from, but. Um, well, they're, yeah. So they're Missouri. They're, the show is in Missouri, and it, but it was supposed to be in Mississippi um or the script was supposed to be in mississippi but it was snowing in vancouver 
So they're like, well, it doesn't snow there. So we have to change this. So they changed it to Missouri. Um, but according to the hairstylist, they were like, yeah, but it was a lot of fun for Jared and Jensen because they're both from Texas and they don't get to see a lot of snow. And they went mm. to bargaining and had a snowball fight. And I was like, mm. kind of like Diana did the first day. She's like, oh, I'm going to go That's play fun. in the snow. And I'm like, you're going to lose your nose. But <laughs> we sledded for a minute. It was too cold. Yeah, oh, you did it. Now you did it. Check, didn't, didn't check. Great. I checked the box. I, checked. <laughs> I, I frolicked in the snow for a minute and then I said, fuck this shit and got warm. Yeah, I faced yeah. my in the snow and said, fuck <clears> this <throat> shit. And I went and did not get warm. All right. So, anyway, so we start off. We've got the radios on. Uh, all right. So, go on, Tana. <laughs> so, the radio's on. This guy driving is like Crown Vic kind of car and it's like obviously bad ish weather. And you see a big truck behind him and Basically, like, obviously, if y'all watching the episode with along with the truck, it starts kind of like coming up, riding his ass and like acts like, acts like he's going to hit him and then starts to try to hit him. And so uh, then it disappears suddenly. And the guy um, does a U turn and, and gets, you know, trying to get away from whatever this thing was that was chasing him, this crazy truck, truck driver. And uh, then he gets rammed repeatedly and his car goes flying. And pretty cool car stunt honestly but the car goes flying and flips over Ta-da. yeah and, and then the um, truck disappears it just kind of fades away into the yes yeah, it just goes away um and it, i guess uh when they were filming this like there was uh, i don't remember this uh, i probably should have written the story down sorry it's been a long week uh, but they did have a lot of fun filming that stunt like there was a ramp and the car was going like 40 miles an hour and like went off so which I always think, like, if I was in, like, actual TV movie stuff, to me, car stunts, besides, I know it's sad to ruin cars, but who gives a shit about that crappy sedan? Yeah, I like, I want to, yeah, yeah, like, let's do that. Let's make a car flip on the air yeah. a bunch of times and, and go down. So, uh, yeah. I, they did wonder, like, and so when the truck disappeared and he turned around, I did for a while I thought it was because of just that area of road. Like that's right. Where like maybe he got to like be. a bear a border or a barrier that he was being chased off of a, whatever. Yeah, that's what I thought of too. But then like it did it went to her house later. So maybe that wasn't it. I was kind of confused about why it doesn't seem it tied that. to that close of a location. Yeah, I thought it was a weird I just thought it was a weird choice. So mm-hmm. Yeah, so then we cut to the brothers, uh, and they were going to head to Pennsylvania, but um, Dean reveals that an old friend called, uh, which obviously you know is a chick, duh, and um, his line is, uh, and, and says that there's something, you know, her dad died, and there's something that seems like up their alley, so he, they need to go see her instead, and I like his quote, she never would have called if she didn't need us. Oh, he, he said never twice, actually. He said she never would have called, never, if she didn't need us. And so, and then while they're driving away, uh, while they start driving to go check on her and find out what's going on, uh, Dean reveals to Sam that it's, her name is Cassie and that she knows what they do, that Dean revealed to her what they do as a family. Uh, and Sam seems actually kind of like irritated, but impressed. I said that, pissed. <laughs> well, he seems pissed, but then he also seems kind of impressed. I thought that Dean would actually reveal something to somebody. Um, I thought it was a, it was a mixed emotion from Sam. Yeah, I, I could, I could see the mixed emotion thing. Like he, one, just because he knows that he is emotionally unavailable, yeah. um, that he was like, oh, you actually have somebody to open up to you. But yeah. he's, I was also like, he pissed, he was pissed because he had to lie to Jess. And he was like, right. basically, how come it was okay for you for to you. tell her mm-hmm. all these things? And I had to lie to something, but yeah. well, later we'll come and we'll get back to that a little bit too, I think later, but it's, a, I think. As far as hooks in storylines, I think that's an interesting one, right? Yeah, so you have sure. somebody who Dean opened up to, Sam couldn't. Sam's kind of pissed, but also like is just really in- you he's do intrigued. This- he's very he's- entertained by yeah. this whole thing. He, you this can whole tell. thing he's does like-, like he's pissed, but it amuses the fuck out of him. Oh, yeah. Like he wants Jared to start does singing amazing, like yeah. Dean and Cassie <laughs> sitting in a tree. That's what he likes. Wants to start yeah. singing that, and he probably would if Dean wouldn't punch him for it. No, no, they're brothers. I'm sure they punch each other all the time. Yep. Fair. So anyways, we cut to Cassie, intro Cassie at this point. Um, and uh, she's, you know, like demanding an investigation into the death of her father. And um, and uh, anyway, so Dean shows up with Sam at this point, basically. Um, and they're talking, yeah. it's kind of like the backstory about, about um, 
Cassie's dad and what happened to him and how like, you know, obviously it was something weird. He knows cars. He owned a car dealership for Christ's sake, like blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> and um, I thought it was kind of, and that the, there basically the, there was a report of a truck running him off the road, her dad. And so there, she oh, did you fast that forward that her house already? Yeah, I did kind of, cause she was demanding the investigation. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. Yeah. I mean, the newspaper office, I think just kind of lays the groundwork for the racism story. Okay, cause you know, yeah. Cassie's like, Oh, you know, it's, you know, if this was white people, you probably would have investigated. So that gets laid there. And then I had a note about that too. Just like, again, the Sam just being entertained as fuck because when like Dean and Cassie see each other for the first time, like oh, yeah. there's some it's googly, eye, there's some eye fucking happening. And eyes. Sam is just like, <laughs> trying not to, yeah. Trying like containing the giggles. Yeah. They're like, Oh, this is very sad. Somebody is dead, but <laughs> my brother likes somebody. Yeah. So we yeah, so at their house and this is where we get to that story then. Right. Yeah, sorry. So sorry. they're back at the house and she's telling the background of how, um, you know, her dad had a car dealership and so on. And, and then also reveal, this is where she reveals that there was a report of a, of a truck chasing her dad off the, off the road. Um, and then um, it, it's kind of interesting. Cassie's mom comes home and she's trying to, you know, of course, Cassie's trying to introduce mom to Dean and Sam. <laughs> and mom seems kind of just like, okay, bye. Like she was kind of evasive and awkward. So that set off alarm bells for me right there. I thought that was interesting. See, but I, I read that a totally different way because I'm like, hey, my husband just died, and there's these two strange guys I don't know in my house, and they want to talk to you about shit. And I'm like, fuck off, my husband just died. No. I don't want to talk to strangers. Fair, that's fair too. Yeah. That's probably yeah, that's fair. Yeah, and we also <laughs> find out that her her dad's best friend was also killed the same way. So now we have right dad, dad's best friend, awful black truck yeah. by an accident, right? Right. Yep. And so. Um, and she and, and she makes a couple lines around here where she says that our best are dropping like flies and, and she's yeah that, that was kind of the scene basically we're setting the tone now for this episode where where there's the um implication of a racial issue there's the super implication of the love story between Sam, uh, dean and cassie and uh, <laughs> if you just said Sam's sam and dean i would have just couldn't die <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Um, that's Dean a whole different Cass. thing <laughs> between Dean and Cassie and Sam's amusement by the whole thing so that's kind of where we're at um, they uh, Sam and Dean show up to try to talk to some of Jimmy Anderson's friends who was the dad's friend that also died that we saw at the beginning get killed and try to talk about uh, so no they, this they is a new one what yeah okay her? so that was the one they showed at the beginning the one at the beginning wasn't her dad that was Jimmy Anderson. Yeah, no, there's another person who dies. So the newspaper guy dies, right? So the first one who died was her dad. Before that, her dad's best friend died. So that was two. Then mm -hmm. the third one who dies is the one who was in the newspaper office with her. And that's Jimmy. So yeah, that's when they show, that's what you see at the beginning of this. Of no, the no, no, this is a different one. This is a different guy. <laughs> Diana was so confused. Okay. If you look at the cast, I'm telling you, Jimmy Anderson is the one they show in the first scene. But he wasn't dead then. Did they? Did the time? They, no. They did the. They fucked the timeline off. I'm telling you, it confused the shit out of me. What the fuck? I'm telling you, the one they show you die at the beginning is Jimmy Anderson dying. They never show her dad dying. Dad must have died before this happened. I'm telling you. What? I am so confused. <laughs> that, that, it threw me off. I had to because like, the guy, who, the guy, never, like the her one, dad's never in it. Like you never see the dad. The dad's name, right? Never but I thought the, the casting. I thought the dad was the one who they were showing in the first place. No, dad's not in the cast. I'll check again. Now I'm I don't know. I don't know. I swear to God, the first one was because it happened before she called him. The first one was supposed to be her dad. The first one you see dying is her dad, and then now this is Jimmy. The one that they're showing it's completely separate car crash dad Ooh, we, we, i know now we're on a thing. we've got we got some struggles here uh -huh. um i've got the script too i'll, I'll go back and look at the script uh but no this is jimmy so the guy who was just alive in the newspaper is now dead so this is a new accident scene because jimmy was just alive in the newspaper office and let's say i oh fuck i'm confused Oh my God, you guys don't do this to my snow brain. My snow brain can't handle this. Snow brain, no snow brain. Okay, uh, all, right. all right. 
right. So we're going to keep going on, but I, but I know like the scene they just show of the scene they just show of the camera where it goes to an open field, there's a crash car, there's wheels spinning. That is Jimmy. So yes. this is Jimmy and the, the truck is there. So at least, okay, we're just going to go like, and we'll, we'll, we'll sort this shit out later. <laughs> I, I will have to go back and look at some scripts because I, unless like the, the casting was just off, uh, well, I don't know. Okay. Anyway, so now we're at the accident site. And the mayor's still blowing the shit off that it was an accident and Cassie wants her road closed. And the mayor is like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not racist and you should go talk to your mom, right? Yeah. And so, um, and I didn't note that at the time, but that is important. I kind of played it all like, oh, whatever. Okay, he's just man. Um, being defensive. So after that scene where they, um, where she's once again implying that it's a race, uh, a racial issue at, uh, that they that these deaths are occurring. That's when Sam and Dean show up in ill-fitting suits to go pretend to be <laughs> insurance representatives and talk to t- a couple of Jimmy's friends. Um, and that um, this is where you know he, they're kind of trying to like dig like was he okay and was he acting crazy or did he say anything weird? And which is weird questions for an insurance agent to ask. But. Um, <laughs> It's one medical of them, history, man. It's medical. One of them starts telling a story about how the monster, there was a monster truck in the 1960s killing people in town and, and basically says that it was targeting black families. So uh, black, black people at that time. So black, yeah. Black men. Black men. Yeah. Particularly, sorry. Particularly. But I mean, I think, yeah, I think the story goes beyond that, but, yeah. but it was also, he disappeared in a big, nasty black truck. Everyone loves a nasty black truck. Nasty black truck. Um, do you want to talk about the nasty black truck? Because you yeah. and your husband had some fun times looking well, into this. Yeah, and I mean, I know it's on the wikis and all that, but we're we're into cars and I'm like, oh, that's kind of a fucking cool truck. I mean, not really because the truck's evil, but um, it's a cool well, looking Evil truck. trucks are great. Racist, racist trucks are not great. And I do like how it's called the racist truck in all the wikis. <laughs> Yeah. So that truck is a, um, obviously modified, but it is a 1962 Dodge power wagon. Um, it obviously has a lot of added lights on it. Like that, that not stuck to have that many lights on a truck. I'm just saying, <laughs> what? But, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's weird. Right. But yeah, so, um, there's, uh, they obviously pulled the badge off the front. So it was not easily identifiable for the television show. Um, and there's some other slight modifications to it, um, other than the lights, but, but yeah, that was a. Oh, well, I mean, it was lifted. There was new tires. There was yeah. a whole Lift- bunch of other mods. Yeah. And I know that they weren't happy the the showrunners with how it looked because it looked too monster trucky mm-hmm. um, to them, you know, as opposed yeah. to. No, that wouldn't have been done like that early in the. 60s. That was like, but that's what I was like in the sixties. Were they modding things? So I don't think that would have been those. Well, were were there were there running lights and things like that? I don't know. Uh, I mean, they would have had them, but that would. I mean, I, I, on a work truck, they possibly could have added some of those things, but they wouldn't have been as uh, readily available. It's not like like the hot rodding culture where you like modify things, build what you can, you know, fab it yourself. You, you're not really going to be doing that type of work on with lights, with extra running lights. That's just not probably the, the approach. I mean, for 1963, but, I don't see that as being a modification. You would make. It's certainly a modification you would make now. Right. Yeah. Although, it looks, it look, it's like, it looked like a 60, it's a 62 truck and it looks like they did to it what a redneck would do to a truck today. To make That's, it a monster truck. To make it but up. I would I would also like, let's be kind of careful on that because my Jeep does she does have Casey lights on her and she yeah. is lifted and she has big fat tires. And you know, because I like you know, having a monster Jeep, but that's, you know, it's a Jeep and she's supposed to look like that. That's, and I'm not a red, supposed to be. I'm not a redneck. I don't, as I look back to the, I had to cancel my hunting trip. I know, I was going to say, well, <laughs> we're just going to, we're just going to refer to the cat onesie to remind people that you're not a redneck. How about that? So I'm a country, I'm a city country girl. I'm an enigma wrapped in a cat suit, but, um, <laughs> But yeah, so uh, it is a fairly cool looking truck, except for the mods, honestly. Those kind of like lame. Yeah, if you can find, 
Oh. If you can find pictures of that not modded, yeah. and so we can post yeah, that, so we can see the difference between like what that really. Because I also, I mean, I love old Plymouths, and I spent old Plymouth trucks. I love old Chevy mm-hmm. trucks. I love good old yeah. farm trucks. I think they're great. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know why you would do that. Like honestly, I don't know why you would do that to that truck. I can yeah, see I th- that. I thought it was would... a Chevy at first, at first glance, just because the shape of the cab, and I'm yeah. really proud of myself. And then it wasn't. But but You're yeah, like, no, yeah, me too. It's a Chevy. Oh shit, no, it's not a Chevy. But yeah, also. Like, the- but if I caught myself, I was like, the grill's all wrong and the headlights are wrong. That's not it. That's not it. So but also, I mean, I would say the front cabs are Chevy. Honestly, like all ca- Chevys, Ford, and Plymouth probably had the same kind of front front lines on them at that time. I think that was just in similar. general. They're so, very similar, but yeah. And almost yeah. everything would have been a step side at that point too. So the bed shape was, you know, well, not all, but all most were going to be a step side, but yeah. So this is Diane um, and Liz talking about cars for 20 minutes yeah, yeah, because yeah. that's what we care about. Yeah. I could, I, I, I could digress into like how I have spent some of my time watching the new uh, Top Gear, which got Diana very confused. She was like, oh yeah, the new American one. I'm like, no, 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 not, not, it's a new yeah. American one. <laughs> it's a new, new American one, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so- yeah. Anyhow, so, okay, so we're right. a truck, truck, truck. So we, got, big, so we, got, we know, truck. we know that we yeah. know that this evil truck chasing the big, the big nasty black truck that's chasing people is a 1962 Dodge Power Wagon. That's what we do know. So, I also all right. Have the name Power Wagon, by the way. Power Wagon, Power which wagon. is it sounds really cool, but it's kind of a misnomer. It's kind of like, but it's a truck. It's not a wagon. Anyway, so yeah. Me. And Diane also has a thing for wagons. If you don't I do. know, I do. I have a thing for right. wagons too. But okay, we're okay. Stop talking about cars. Okay. All, all right. right. So. <laughs> So at this point, Dean starts to talk about it, to him and Sam are talking and they're like, he makes a reference to the flying Dutchman and is talking about it being a phantom truck, you know, um, and maybe it's somehow tied to Cassie's family because it's people that are that she knows and is tied to. Um, and uh, this is uh, where Sam is able to pull a little bit more info from Dean about the relationship with Cassie, about how serious the relationship was, that they were in love and she dumped him. Yeah, which I thought was what is a secret keep moment, and it's just like, ah, yeah. oh, she, you, know, you dumped her. Oh no, she dumped you. Mm-hmm. And but it's also like for breakups of how this goes, like we're supposed to be painful. Like they really don't act like they have a painful breakup. But uh, mm-hmm. like it seems kind of off, and we'll, we'll get into more of the relationship. But since yeah. Dean is talking about flying Dutchman in phantom trucks, I think it's time for us to. Go to another side tangent because why the fuck not? We're just on a tangent episode. <laughs> and let's talk about some lore. 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 All right. So, Phantom Trucks. This seems like something that would be really easy to research because we all have, like, it, I, I, for, to me, it feels like a, a, an urban legend that exists, but it doesn't. <laughs> uh there's a few urban legends about uh cars there's you know and there's and even most of them weren't even phantom cars a lot of them are things like just haunted cars like you know the james dean car and other things like that um so but i did find one place that has tales of big black phantom trucks and that is the america's most haunted road that's Clinton Road in New Jersey. <sighs> so we are going to Jersey. Um, I really apologize to all my friends in Jersey. I didn't make that accent on purpose. I'm so sorry. Um, okay, <laughs> so um, this is supposed to be one of the most haunted roads in America, but really I think it's just there is a most urban legends around this place. And I don't have the exit. Sorry, I'm not going to pull that shit. Um, but so this what Clinton Road was named for a now vanished settlement. I think it was, I read somewhere like now vanished. I'm thinking about it. I'm like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever read. But there was this, it's not like they disappeared. It wasn't Roanoke. There was just people who lived in Clinton. And then they in a place anymore. So Clinton. And now there isn't a town named Clinton. There's a town named West Milford. And this is Passaic County in Jersey. And there's a 10 mile stretch of deserted road. And it starts on New Jersey. Route 23. And according to Weird New Jersey, the legend goes back to at least 1905 
when J. Percy Crayon, good name, Crayon, wrote that it was never advisable to pass through the five mile woods after dark, for tradition tells us they were infested with bands of robbers and counterfeiters, to say nothing of the witches that held their nightly dances and carousels at Green Island, and the ghosts that then made their appearance in such frightful forms that it was more terrifying to the peaceful inhabitants and wild animals or even the Indians that often passed. I, I could not find this anywhere. Uh, so J. Percy Crayon was a person. He wrote, I guess, you know, he wrote Rock, Rockaway Records in Morris County, New Jersey. I actually know where Morris County, New Jersey is because I used to date a guy who lives in Morris County back in, <laughs> back in the day. So I actually have spent time in that part of New Jersey, which is not near where Passaic County is. They are, they are not close. Uh, and I looked through, like, and it's such an interesting archive piece. Uh, Basically, it's a history of like uh, all the families that are settled in Morris County um, back to back to what he has. There's discussions on cemeteries and all this other stuff, but this was not in there. So if you are the guys from Weird New Jersey and you can show me the source where this came from, I would appreciate it. Because the only place I saw I saw that repeated was in other people repeating it, which is which is why this is a great urban legend. Yeah, because it's like. Yeah, we was like, oh, this is factual. And I've saw this repeated over and over again, but it always sinks back to the weird New Jersey people. So, yeah. but there are a ton of urban legends around here and there's multiple. So we're gonna start with older urban legend number one, which is Cross Castle. There is a three-story castle-like structure in the woods that was built in 1905 by Richard Cross. And it was for him and his family. And we're like, oh, we're gonna make this great like mansion thing. Uh, and he died in 1917 and the family sold the property to Newark uh, in 1919. And the fire eventually destroyed much of the structure, and it, but it left the stone walls. And when the stone walls are there, everyone's like, oh, Satanists hang out there and so of the KKK. Um, so we got Satanists, we got KKK, lots, lots of people in robes. There's gonna be a lot yeah. of robe, there's a robe scene. It's very, it's very robe centric. It's uh, a robe centric, you know? It's like, yeah, hey, we're gonna hang out here. We're gonna be in robes, you know, it's what you do. We're gonna go to a castle, um, you might as well, right? Right, yeah. So one visitor did take a pic of graffiti there and basically like on a plank of wood. You can you can see this picture online. I don't know how valid this picture is, uh, but they're like, oh, I looked it up and this was from the official Lex Satanicus, which is a, uh, Anthony LaVey's Church of Satan's Code of Conduct. I don't know. Um, so that was theoretically there. Uh, there's another legend that says that it rebuilds itself every October 30th and the KKK sacrifices a goat there when it does that. So goat sacrifice and KKK. So we got racist Satanists. Crossover. Yeah. Crossover. As much as the other things that go into this episode. So we've got, you know, like trucks, Satanists, goats. Wait, there's no goats in the episode, but this should have been. The episode should have had more goats. All right. All the episodes should have more goats. <laughs> oh, everything should have more goats. All right, so the walls of the, like the standing walls were eventually uh, knocked down in 1988 when the Newark Watershed Commission deemed the structure unsound. So I guess this is actually closer to Morris County than I thought as the Newark Watershed. I can't look at maps, so whatever. Okay, I'm not good at geography. So urban <laughs> legend number two. Okay, so there is the Clinton Ironworks and this was built in the early 1800s and it's a pyramid shaped structure that was was part of like an iron making community whatever the fucking iron making community is um i'm assuming it's iron work so yeah. uh like steel and stuff like if you drive through jersey you can have like the we're like a drive through triton they have like you know triton makes something takes but that's all about like iron working uh so that community also quote unquote faded away in the 1850s like things keep disappearing i don't know where they're going hmm. uh, but so the ironworks site is surrounded by a chain link fence and you can see it from the road and the urban legend is is that it was a druid temple because you know all the druids that hang out in new jersey <laughs> Well, and, and they wear robes too, don't they? They do wear robes. So okay. I told ro robe centric <laughs> legends, man. So, but I was just like, and you can, and we'll, when we get into some of the videos that are about this, we're like, so we're like, yeah, druids. And I'm like, really fucking guys, druids in New Jersey, all the, the, the druids that ran, ran rampant, you know, that's, they, they left the Great British Isles and settled here in the whatever and started oh god okay so urban legend number three is dead man's curve uh, and this really is like a it's just a really shitty curve because you know it's really sharp and you go around it and you can die so around this curve we know there are ghosts the occult and the kkk apparently there's a lot of kkk there and they've been linked to that corner 
there's also been UFOs. So one of one urban legend, there was like, after we went around Dead Men's Curve, we suddenly saw a huge flash in the sky in a triangular disc. This thing was damn big in the sky and it was hovering over the trees about 250 feet in the air. My friends and I always said we would pull over, we saw a UFO, but we were too scared. And after about five minutes, it disappeared and we took off. So UFOs, I, mean, I don't know if they're racist aliens or just, I mean, some aliens, aliens wear robes, right? Yeah. <laughs> some of them wear robes. Yep. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just like, do, do the, do the cults and the, and the KKK kick it? Like, I mean, I don't know. I just... Are they one of the same? Maybe. Like, I, I, I think they could just be, you know, I, there's a lot of or people... just a bunch of like dumb kids in robes that went around around these places and created all of these. You can't um, like I'm doing things that you can't see I in the might, podcast. I might but be I'm on like, something. Where I'm just like, on, like awkward goth kids in robes are running around this place, and now everybody thinks it's either like a hangout for Satanists or KKK or haunted. Yeah, or it's right. just also urban legends, and this is how yeah, things like yeah, the stories go. And yeah. what are the fun things you want to talk about? You want to talk about Satanists and you want to talk about the KKK because they're both scary, I guess. The Satanists aren't scary, but not really yeah. Okay, urban legend number four ghost boy. So, <laughs> there, one of the legends is there's a bridge with the water under it, and if you toss coins over the bridge and into the water below, the boy's ghost will throw it back or mm -hmm. place them in the middle of the road. It should also be noted that there is more than one bridge on Clinton Road, and nobody knows which bridge is the actual bridge where Ghost Boy oh. is supposed to live. So people just like stop and throw quarters over random bridges, and you know, Ghost Boy is there. But so I mean, I uh, with Coinstar, people somebody's making a killing if they go down. Somebody <laughs> is like, I would just be like parked over that wall and just hanging out there. Maybe there's just trolls under there. I don't, I don't think trolls trolls are robes though, so maybe not mm. trolls. Mm. But yeah, I would just hang out under that bridge all the time. Just be like, oh, pretty funny. Um, so one of the the quotes was you know, we found the bridge on clinton road that was said to have started the rumor and their version of it was a boy was challenged by his friends to stand on the bridge as they drove to route 23 and back unfortunately by the time the friends returned from driving to the highway they found their friend dead and there was a bridge painted as a memorial to him there's mm. not guys that, that that's not true um also mm. there's the story i heard was that a little boy was hit by a car and killed on the bridge when he went to pick up a quarter he saw on the ground the legend mm. is that if you get out of your car and stand on the bridge you will see you will see a quarter drop and if you bend down to pick it up the little boy will push you into the lake to save you from being hit by the car that's terrifying <laughs> I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, some disturbing ass myths here and urban legends. Good lord. Yeah. Yeah. I know. But it's also there, you can see that running thing too. We've got water. We've yeah. got, you know, kid that was killed. If you do yeah. this, this will happen to you. Right. Um, eventually, someday we'll talk about things like the haunted. I don't know if I'll get into supernatural, but I'll pull the haunted railroad Jackson in here at some point and talk about my stories of that. But mm -hmm. all right. So we're finally on the urban legend number five, which is ghost truck. So, there is supposedly a menacing black truck, just like in this episode, that lurks on the road. It appears out of nowhere. The truck gets extremely close to your rear bumper. It flashes its lights and then disappears in the night. So, go into YouTube and just put in oh the search God. Clinton Road ghost truck. Holy okay. shit. So There's bad. so many videos, so many, so many, but the one that you should watch is the one from Jane yes. Nation. Um, yes. And it's titled, Do Not Go to Clinton Road at 3 a.m. Challenge, Chased by Ghost Truck. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. Bro, 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 bro. Dude, 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 bro, dude, dude, bro, bro, dude, bro, dude. dude. <laughs> I told I like I when I watch this I I normally don't have Diana watch the things Canadian. I watch because they're scary but were they Canadian I don't know if they're these guys uh, are Canadian, yeah, they were just but, had a Canadian coin one of them had a well Canadian then, no coin. I thought they could they just had the Canadian coin to make oh, they it just had one? to well to I have it be like it sounded like Yankees made a Canadian coin that's to, to prove that like when the quarter got thrown over I thought they sounded like Jersey boys you thought they sounded Canadian or I also they just sounded like douchebags um so <laughs> but which is also the general theme of children going to this road and so there is a 23 it's a minute long yeah. video she's like you don't have to watch the whole thing but just get the feel for it because i need to talk about this and i'm like i can't turn this off this is greatness these guys are hilarious it was ridiculous 
Yeah, we will, uh, of basically, course, but it's basically, it's basically yeah. these, like these guys and they're trying to do all the challenges where they drive the road. They're trying to see the ghost kid on the bridge and they're trying to find the phantom truck. And they say, dude, bro, dude, bro, dude, bro, bro, a lot. Bro, 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 bro. And, like, and they and then, are, and one of them was like super excited and smash, smash the like button. <laughs> smash so that like you, button you called that out I, I had that we didn't even talk about that she sent me the her things back and I, i'd already written that down he was like we will get out of this car if you smash the like button smash like, the like button just smash it guys you want to get twenty thousand likes man so you're gonna smash it and we'll get out of this car and then he was, was like so amped and his buddy was terrified <laughs> well and they also like yeah so there's there's many different personalities on here which are fantastic and one of the and like they're all like why is there a car pulled over on the side of the road up here can you believe there's a car on the side of the road I'm like, because every motherfucker in new jersey is filming this on youtube stop doing this and i'll get into reasons why later but y'all like stop going on the side of the road to film videos in the middle of the night because this road is really dark there are no lights yeah, you're gonna fucking die because someone's gonna hit you. Um, and there's like this really great thing, and I don't know how much they edited it, and I don't know how much it was real, but there's a truck like riding on their ass and honking through it, and they're just freaking out. And I'm like, pull over. Like it is also, it was a snow apocalypse up there when they filmed this, but they were like so yeah. scared. And but it's also like if I lived near Clinton Road and I had a truck, you damn better believe I would be out there driving up on all these people's asses like all the time and just freaking like as, as much as you guys throwing, are having fun throwing coins at people Throw, and throwing, tailgating. I'm, that's, I'm that's their list of new hobbies <laughs> do you know how much fun that would be just be like god get off this goddamn road so yeah so the truck does a phantom truck quote unquote phantom. it was a real truck it wasn't a phantom truck it was an actual truck that's behind them and this oh. happens over and over again in all the videos you see so there are actually legitimate like truckers who have to go down this road and if you watch it like they're actually going places like there's a coal mine there's mm. it's an abandoned it's not an abandoned road people live here and there are things there it's just really dark there aren't any street lights so you're gonna see trucks because <laughs> and they're really annoying and this is my thought is no there's not phantom truckers there's just really annoyed truckers and they're like please stop driving down this road really slow i have to go do my job and also it's really fun to scare the crap out of you so that's my thought on the phantom truck because there's nothing on there anything else you want to say about bro 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 dudes i i just i mean i think you need to i think we need to link it because it's I'm, oh yeah it's definitely okay. already yeah it's, it's just making linked. sure because yeah. I'm going to steal their smash the like button from now on. That's my name. Smash the like. Smash hey. that like. Smash that like button, guys. Smash yeah, it. If, if, you, if you like Devil's <laughs> Trap Podcast, don't you smash that like button. Yeah. Smash okay. the like button, guys. For Devil's Trap Podcast. Bro. <laughs> All right. uh, okay so that's the last of the urban legends uh, uh there's a couple of rando things around there associated to um there's a bunch of un unidentified cryptids and other strange animals like hellhounds jersey devil other things that are seen around there and so there's some debate over like their supernatural creatures or if a former animal attraction closed down 40 years ago and just let the animals run rampant through the jersey woods which oh. is also so this leads to my favorite urban legend recount, which was one night my sister and her friend were driving down Clinton Road. My sister's friend said, what is that? My sister looks out and there was a monkey and they were both freaked out. Monkeys aren't common to West Milford. <laughs> so no, no, no. now I can't, I really do want to go because I just want to look for monkeys. But <laughs> Uh, so in media wise, uh, in 2019, so just last year, there is a new movie out called Clinton Road, the movie, and it features Ice T. And I think he's just recapping his super SUV character, but he could be under mobster. I thought about watching it during some apocalypse, but I couldn't bring myself to watch it because it looked real bad. But um, so yeah, so there's a horror movie where a widowed firefighter seeks closure after his wife goes missing on an actual haunted road in New Jersey and it, he has to unlock the road seeker if he wants to get out so urban legends we know like some things that arrive from facts there aren't any facts about this shit um there is one thing I will say like so this, this is an old fact but so the state transportation records do show from 2007 to 2011, there were 51 accidents near Route 23 Clinton Road intersection that involved one fatality and 17 injuries and 12 of the drivers involved were under the age of 20. So 
stop being dumb fucks and driving along a dark road and pulling over on the side and causing a bunch of fucking accidents because it will be haunted because all y'all will be dead so stop doing this like nobody wants to watch your youtube <laughs> like just stop it uh, i will say the one interesting thing that really did happen on this was that in 1983 the body of daniel Deppner was found by a cyclist in a wooded area on clinton road um and they spotted the corpse because he was e spotted the corpse because he was getting eaten by a turkey vulture. And I'm like, there's just one turkey vulture. Why is there not more? Um, mm -hmm. And he'd been wrapped inside a green garbage bag. But he was killed by Richard Kuklinski, who is the Iceman, who's one of the most notorious mob hitmen. Mm -hmm. um, he's this, uh, Richard Daniel Deppner actually was a former associate of Kuklinski's, and they were both car they were in a seat in a scheme to like steal cars. Um, but he was killed by cyanide and dumped out there and the Iceman has some really I did watch I went down a true crime rabbit hole and watched a bunch of stuff on him um, on like I renewed my HBO Max subscription because HBO has all these tapes of him in jail mm -hmm. um, and just a really interesting like mob hitman story like and he it was real weird. I mean, like he, but they, they, I stopped watching it when they got to the tapes. He started talking about how he used to kill cats and what he did to them. Again, no warning about like, I'm like, oh, this is fine. Like you killed a guy with cyanide by putting it on his hamburger. But then like, you'd put cats in an incinerator. Fuck you, Aww. fuck you. Like I'm not, no, I'm not, not watching this anymore. But um, if you can handle that, there's uh, a bunch of interviews with him on old HBO documentaries to go back to like the, I think probably the nineties because it was like, home box office like it was before yeah. like it became hbo and then they went back and revisited and did more interviews with him but killed between 100 to 200 people as a hitman wow. uh, just a fascinating character and a sociopath like making a living off of being a sociopath okay. um so but yeah so that's the actual only literal killing i found there which is so interesting but not but a ghost not trap. haunted no, no there's nobody died a truck stop stop looking for the truck stop it okay <sighs> all right we can get back to the episode now back to the episode because we're about to hit sexy time <gasps> we're getting into the sexy time well yeah, so they start bickering and i have some really yeah. good notes about i have a quote from there i don't know if you Ooh. have this one or not but yeah I, my, says, my go you yeah. can go go for it because my only one's about the apology and that's right before the launch so you go for it Okay, so they start fighting and then she says, whenever we get, what's the word, close, anywhere in the neighborhood of emotional vulnerability, you back off or make some joke or find any way to shut the door on me. And this is where my hormones start raging. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's an emotionally cut off guy. I was like, fuck yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> so, okay. so then they yell at each other and they start doing it. Well, they, um, they yell, they, they yell, apologize to each other. Both of them do <laughs> yell apologies and then immediately start kissing. I thought that was funny. I said, then make out in all caps. And then that turns into that word make out. Yeah. And I actually thought this was a pretty good sex scene. Like I thought it was a sexy sex scene. I thought it was, it was good. It was. Uh, um, and the song playing during it is a song called Paradise by an artist named Sharif. Yep. Uh, the original one was She Brings Me Love by Bad Company, which is a really terrible Bad Company song. I don't recommend listening to it. I'm like, you know what? In this time, it's kind of cool if you change it to Sharif. Uh, Sharif hasn't done, like, a lot of his songs have been, um, I don't know how far you went down the Sharif rabbit hole. <laughs> He's been, his, they've used a lot of his music in shows and things like that before. Yeah. So it's, you know, it, it's it sounded like pretty, it's a good singer songwriter y kind of vibey songs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. So the dude it to that. Um, one interesting thing was that the network was upset because she was on top, and they're like, "The girl can't be on top." And was, they're like, "We're like blowing up a bunch of trucks and killing people, but you're upset because there's a girl on top of a guy." We have a racist pickup truck, and you're concerned mm -hmm. about a girl on top. We start talking about killing a bunch of children, yeah. and your problem is that a girl is riding cowboy is that cowboy yeah. at their front face uh, yeah yeah oh uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so cow, cow, cow girl yeah whatever cow girl yeah well i guess she's riding a cowboy I she's riding a cowboy <laughs> yeah. but yeah i i honestly uh i thought it was a 
first as, as far as i don't really like i generally don't like sex scenes but i thought it was actually pretty kind of sexy and i think maybe it's just because i'm like really lonely and horny and stuck in my house and i was just like man i bet dean smells good and that's when i was like oh man like you like that bed looks really warm right now <laughs> that bed looks so warm <laughs> i bet like their body temperature is like oh man you have another person to get body temperature from that sounds so good uh, anyway so anything else in the sex scene yeah, no, I was just going to make a crack. I'm like, yeah, we've just been letting all three dogs sleep in our bed with us the last few nights. So it's been very toasty, but yeah, really well, toasty. Because even though our bed's a king bed, we are not little people and we have three large dogs. Um, so they, yeah. yeah, so both of them are over, like, so Dave's over six, he's six what? He's, he's right, just over six foot. And then yeah. I'm five ten, And then our biggest dog is 100 pounds and our smallest dog is 65 pounds. There's yeah. three. So, yeah I, the cat special. is gonna be very confused when i move back to the bed because there's like oh we sleep in the couch next to each other now <laughs> this is what we do and now. and you look like a cat while you sleep next to me and so <laughs> this is my, this is how you are mine now you're becoming me <laughs> <laughs> this is this is our pack or whatever or cats packs i don't know like cats are packs but uh yeah so like in in normal times i sleep in my room like i have a pillow like in my bed where she sleeps on the pillow next to my head yeah but now she's just like, oh, we get I get to get cuddled in a tortilla blanket. And now she's like, what what do you <laughs> anyways? Okay, so right. sex and, so and then sexy scenes struck. done. Sexy scenes end, and we cut to the mayor um who's looking at some blueprints out in this field, and it looks real cold. <laughs> just and you see the truck pulls up. Uh and he's not back in his vehicle yet he's trying to get to it and uh doesn't have time to get into his vehicle and so he's being chased by this truck on foot bt dub you're gonna lose and does get hit obviously he by the truck and he did yeah one night i did have him i was like is everybody in this town driving an ugly sedan <laughs> yeah, there's, like, a, there's a large number of like it was uh, that i think one was a crown vic and it looked like a crown vic at the beginning i didn't yeah i'm sorry and then we've got this lincoln town car i'm like man they're just, just like unmarked awesome. terrible cop cars it's like <laughs> generic <laughs> or sedans. 80s like or 90s cop cars 90s. like yeah 90s yeah. sedans like i mean they're i mean they're affordable reliable vehicles i mean that's I think my first car was an 84 Buick. Uh, it was in the Saber. It was maybe it was a LeSabre. I don't remember what Buick it was, but it was gigantic. I fit 17 people in it once. But I mean, yeah, I, I guess sedans are, a, it was my dad's businessman car that got, you know, pushed down to my brother and then to me when I started driving. So I guess, you know, rich people or if you're well off, you had an ugly sedan thank you car industry for getting rid of those because they were fucking hilarious hideous i don't i had i had a really nice i had a really cool sedan though for a minute i had a, a mercury marauder for a minute which looks like a like a, it was a 2003 or four shit anyways and it was a it looks like a grand marquis or a yeah a crown vic only it's a sleeper so it's like super high performance but it had well, yeah, the guy I dated in New Jersey was really into like building and restoring like all the mid eighties, late eighties, early nineties, like sedans and making them all huge and stuff. And I just don't get it. Cause I think they're ugly. Yeah. yeah. Fair. That's just my opinion. So, anyway. Uh, all right. So not as ugly, you know, I mean, they stopped easy. making the Marauder. So a lot of people probably agreed with you. So <laughs> probably the fact. Case, yeah. I mean, it's not that I think S SUVs are pretty. So, um, anyhow, okay. So, so we get back, and we're getting some pillow talk. So yeah, pillow and talk they decree happening. that they are basically good at fighting and fucking. Is what they decree. <laughs> but they're too. I've been in that things. relationship. <laughs> um, and um, she kind of wants to know why he told her about what they do, what like what the family does, and he's like, I don't really know. Um, yeah. And that, uh, anyways, apparently he was the, you know, basically he was more scared to work things out than of his monsters at work. Oh, so, yeah. And I thought you just from a character perspective, you know, it's like, this is probably, if you want to go into like passings and why Dean doesn't open up to people, he opened up to her. She thought he was nuts. And yeah. so he was like, if I open up to people, it's just going to end badly. 
Right. And even if she didn't think, I don't even know if she really thought, I guess I would think somebody was not severe. Like I hunt ghosts. Yeah. But- like as much as I am like into like fantasy and I want magic to be real, I don't really want ghosts and monsters to be real, but, but if I would like, I will admit that I wish like, I, I want to go to fucking Hogwarts for realsies and make this shit happen. Why can't magic be real? That's bullshit. But at the same time, if someone's like, yeah, I totally hunt this shit. I'm like, you're fucking bonkers, deuces. You know, it's like, there's a, I'm like, Argh. well, I mean, if, I guess if you're a paranormal investigator, I wouldn't think you're nuts. Like, well, a little, but yeah, if you're like, were, I don't think that's how he worded it. Yeah. Like I, <laughs> monsters are real and I hunt them. Okay. Yeah. Crazy train. And then also like, what are you, you, this is a new, I'd be like, this is a new way to try and break up with me. Like, this yeah. is like, I've heard a lot of shit before. And yeah. Uh, well, and that's what she thought. This was she not, thought on, that, this she is thought not on your that, tender profile <laughs> like okay i get it you have a girlfriend like come on no um no like i mean uh, and she says that's what she thought she thought he was just being a fucking wuss about breaking it off with her and that's why she broke it off with him like she didn't actually want to dump him she just thought that she had to be the be the grown-up no she would say yep no, I get it. Also, like if you're in a relationship with an emotionally unavailable guy, and then he yeah. says this, so you're like, oh, okay, cool, oh, out. Yeah. Like, I'm peace, like, this is an know? elab. This is an elaborate excuse. However, okay, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, you went to the bowling alley and your girlfriend stole your phone and she texted all your the people on your phone. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what? so what? weird when that happens. That so happens weird. Everybody. So many people that happens too. Anyhow, okay, so I just thought that was an interesting character arc that got put in there um so we're gonna go back we got mayor's dead and every bone was crushed his internal organs were turned to pudding i love that pudding I was like, that's, pudding. One, that's, a, that's one description you can give there um and that um yeah basically uh they're like oh kind of like you got hit by a truck and it's like yeah no shit i feel like you got hit by a truck so uh but they noticed that the mayor is not black the mayor's white and so they're like, well, this doesn't fit the profile now and what they think is going on. Um, so they're a little um, flummox trying to find the link between the 1960s deaths and the deaths from today. Uh, so uh, they did figure out though that the land that the mayor was standing on was owned by the Dorian family. Um, that, well, that also was... the mayor. So the mayor owned the land. Yeah, and the mayor, then... the mayor. Yeah. Right. He, he bought the I thought he bought the land from the Dorian family. He bought the land at one time it was a Dorian family. So right. He bought the land. So he's on he's going to develop this land that he bought and it used to belong to the Dorian family and a member yeah. of that family went missing in the 60s. Um and we Also never... Sherlock Sam figured that out by yeah, the way. Yeah, Sherlock Sam's on the Sherlock Sam was back on it. He's on the case. Y'all saw, hopefully y'all saw the our, our new picture on Instagram of that. And there was a structure on the property at some point, but the mayor had that bulldozed because it was in the way of what he wants to do to the land, basically. Which I think is a, a, I don't think that's right because the end, what we see in the last heart, there's still things on that that site that he was supposed to have bulldozed. So you can tell the script was written in a couple of weeks. It's a little loose. loose They're running things a little loose on this one, yeah. So uh, we cut to um, that evening. Um, oh, and they figure out that the day after that he had the bulldo- the property bulldozed was when the first uh, killing happened. Yeah. Um, the first of the new killings happened, not the 60s ones, obviously. So um, we see Cassie at home just sitting there ha- sipping a cocktail by herself. And of course, lights start flickering. We all know that's a bad sign at this point. Uh, and you start hearing a truck outside kind of revving its... Uh, revving its engine and <laughs> starts kind of like acting like it's going to ram the fucking house which is scary uh, yeah no scary. i'd be scared as shit and i have nightmares about that stuff all the time because i have weird nightmares but yeah um but yeah trucks like going lights outside your house revving truck that's scary as shit and so she calls dean so dean comes over and so finally we we're finally going to get some truth we're going to have some truth some truth talk with yeah. Cassie's mom. And I also just figured out that her name is Mrs. Robinson and that made me laugh. So <laughs> you see you, Mrs. Robinson, and you're truth telling. <laughs> yeah. So they're kind of sitting there talking it and and you know, they're trying to figure out what did dad see this truck? And she's kind of just like deflecting. Um, but then she kind of comes around to say, well, it looked just like Cyrus Dorian's truck, but she knew that he was dead. And this circles back because 
they didn't know no one knew that cyrus was dead um they just went missing in the 60s and um yeah so uh she tells the backstory that basically she was dating both cyrus and martin um which is cassie's dad and um at the uh you know she basically broke broke it off with cyrus to be with martin and it was the 60s and interracial couple in a small town blah 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 blah, blah. so it was not seen on fondly especially by good old cyrus so he was fucking pissed and was full of hate and uh on the date they were gonna have a very quiet small wedding because they knew that people wouldn't be but before he it. starts killing people before that so he starts r- right, killing people yeah yeah so he starts like chasing people down with his truck and just being a jackass basically and, and a terrible racist jerk and, and them. Yep. yeah and so on the date of their wedding which is gonna be just t- the small church um uh someone set fire to the church and the entire children's choir was killed um which is real dark and then um after that one night the truck um came for martin and cyrus uh got out of the truck and started beating the shit out of martin and martin fought back and killed cyrus oh are you there are you there oh are you there are you there there uh so um you're gonna notice probably we're not gonna do some quick sound editing there but uh (laughs) i lost power but it wasn't too bad it was like what like 30 minutes an hour i have no right around right just shy of an hour um and like i don't know what time is but (laughs) um so yeah sorry about that guys and what we're gonna backtrack but when my power did come back on, I did have a chance to go pull up this. I pulled up the script, not the transcript. So this is the studio draft. Things may have changed, but just to answer our question about who was in the first scene, um, according to the script, it's Martin. That's insane. They don't. They don't even cast him anywhere. They maybe IMDb just sucks but um sometimes so it but a timeline it makes a lot more sense the timeline makes way more sense but that's just odd because they only show young martin that i saw in there okay well yeah that's and that answers that i thought it was the same actor maybe i don't know maybe they just got confused who knows or maybe i'm or we got confused i don't don't, anyway so the first scene was martin and then later it's (laughs) jimmy that's what we've just yeah, established. Yeah. So, the so timeline is, okay. is, yeah. So timeline is Martin. We know before Martin dies, uh, his best friend had died as well. So there was three guys that were killed after. Yeah. So best friend, Martin, Jimmy, then and Mayor. The, yes. Yeah. So four people have been killed by the ghost truck. The right. racist. And the racist best friend truck. is the best friend is the one that was killed the day after the property was bulldozed. Right. And then Martin is when we see, which leads into why Cassie calls um, uh, Sam or called Sam and Dean, but Dean yep. specifically. And then we see obviously Jimmy's death, who is the reporter. And then we have uh, the mayor is dead also. Okay. Yep. And the mayor is okay. the first white one that's killed. And that's why, and that's why it threw off the pattern for them because they were so uh, fixated on it being specifically racially motivated truck yep. murders. There we go. All right. So where we left off was right when I lost Liz and we were talking. Um, so mystery solved. Thank you for your research. I was confused. And obviously the way, as we discussed, kind of a weak storyline. So that probably explains why we were confused. Maybe we were the only ones or overthinking it, but it is what it is. Yeah. Um, so where we left off talking about the story this episode was when Mrs. Robinson is coming out with the truth of what is going on and what happened and what spawned this whole freaking mess yep she's dropping the truth bombs yeah so we found out go ahead we found out that mom and cyrus dated she broke it off with cyrus to be with martin who is cassie's dad and obviously it was um a frowned upon by a lot of people in their community because it was a a, you know a interracial couple and then um Cyrus was pissed and let his full racist rage show and started killing people, targeting black men. And uh, on the date of their wedding, they were going to have a very small wedding because they knew that they didn't want to draw a lot of attention. 
um, someone uh, set their fight, the, set the church that they were going to have their wedding in on fire with the entire children's choir inside, killing the entire children's choir, which is fucked up. So fucked up. I'm like, my note on that was just, dang. Mm-hmm. Where's many of them like, damn, you went there? I'm like, all right. I mean, I guess yeah. you went there and oh yeah. shit. Um, yeah. So, but then they get even more disturbing and then they, they have Cyrus confronting Martin. And so Cyrus mm-hmm. is Beating hitting shit out of with Martin. a bat, Martin with a bat, which was real hard to watch. Yeah. And then Martin starts beating him with a bat that's also hard. Just, well, beauty people with beauty bats, people with bats is hard, is hard to watch, to watch. <laughs> agreed that's not not fun not not comfortable viewing um yeah, but and, martin uh, ended and up martin, killing him yeah martin and, killed cyrus yeah. yeah so he but he knew that because of the um law enforcement in the time and the in the community at the time and being rural a lot of racism still um they are not a lot of racism at that time specifically at, yeah, we're not saying um, there's not racism now we're just saying anyways. at this time it would have been even worse it'd be worse and than that. so he um called a couple of his friends to come help him specifically the people that have since been killed um and uh, to help roll uh, put put cyrus's body into his big evil truck and roll that truck into the swamp um, and the mom goes on to tell them that the now mayor, who is now deceased, the former mayor, and, and um, now mayor, was, former a, mayor. <laughs> was a was a deputy at the time in the town, figured out what had happened and knew that Cyrus was a shit bag. And so he didn't pursue the case, basically. Yeah. So I, 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 I have a feeling we're gonna have a lot of talks about cop dynamics through the show, but that's a very interesting <laughs> one, right? Just, right. you know, we're going back to like, this is 1960s um, in, and even Missouri, which is still really bad, not as bad as the original was supposed to be Mississippi, but, and this is, you know, goes back into the, uh, the, you know, the original thing, the mayor is like, you know, I'm not racist, ask your mom, you know? And so yeah. he covered this up for them. So yeah, I mean, it's, an interesting if not it's a weird storyline it's super weird but um yeah so it's very we weird know, and, then, yeah. and then mom's whole thing is that she kept this a secret to protect cassie which i mean i kind of get like oh i'm sharing like that kind of a secret you, she's like how did you keep this from me well it's a it's a fucking murder at the end of the day whether it was self i mean also what are you going to have this conversation like, bt dubs let me tell you this cool story about your dad like i, I don't know like you know that's just not like a story to you can just tell so that was weird that she was so like aghast that her mother had never told her this well yeah like i mean i get you'd want to know but at the same time it's it's pretty dark family secret going on here no matter what the situation is so i thought that was kind of like yeah I, I i get why she kept it a secret just saying like yep. somebody could go to jail still i don't know like such a limitation no, on still, killings it's, can be pretty pretty it's easy. still manslaughter and at the end of the day it's still a black man killing a white man and yeah so Ooh, like is there's a lot of heavy shit in here that's but it's also weird because it doesn't feel heavy i think i think that may be my whole problem with this is that there's a huge race racism storyline in here that is just kind of glossed over and more focused on the truck and maybe that's why it's just weird but also i, I don't know i, don't, I, don't I think i, I think i didn't it. i didn't I, th- I thought i just took it more as you know i thought it was a a way to tell more of a story without a a personal story without focusing on the overarching societal issues that's how i kind of took it yeah no and i get it i just think it's weird like i don't say it's weird it's i mean like we did i mean it's just they were gonna make an episode that was a big statement i don't think it's it's a choice it's a choice they made and so they i guess maybe my problem with that is it's like we're going to talk about racism in 55 minutes or 45 minutes or less episodes of being and to me it was just like we had knowing what this episode was written really fast and we had this ghost truck to go like basically we want to have an episode about a ghost truck right yeah. and so it so seems why, like why, it, why is the ghost truck mad well hillbillies drive racism. pickup trucks so it must be a fucking racist is that like what is that what you think yeah, I, went with it so that's a good storyline let's do it it seems like a very easy cop-out in terms of 
I don't know. Uh, well, it seems yeah. like non-white people wanted to talk about race in a way, but it, whatever. I'm like, yeah, I, we're not getting into this. Um, okay, <laughs> so the truck is pushed into the lake, and yeah. so but now we had to figure out what do you do when you have a truck that's in a lake and you've got to burn and salt a corpse. So. Uh... One funny thing, Sam and Dean are talking outside after this, they find out all this good stuff. And one of the lines in this is, uh, I miss conversations that didn't start with this killer truck. <laughs> yeah, I love that line. It's a amused. really, it's a great line. And so, but, for um, being an episode, but like we're talking about, it's like a little weak in general. There are a couple really great one-liners like that. And like the, like yeah, some of the little no, interactions. I, I think the, the dialogue in this but, episode is great. I think there, yeah. there are some, the dialogue in here, there are some things that are really good. And that line in particular. But mm -hmm. even if you see how they led into that line, it was just, okay, so we're going to randomly, like Sam's going to start, like it was to me, like we're going to be outside talking about the case again. Yeah. yeah. And everything, like to me, like everything that was before that was just a lead up to get to that line, which was a yeah. great line before I was like, well, Sam's going to talk about how he's like, kind of, I guess we had to get into Sam shit. We haven't talked, this has been a Dean episode. We haven't yeah. talked about much of how Sam is like missing being a college student. So let's knock that in there. Right. So that, that gets kind of shoveled in there, but it comes out with that great line. So yeah. So they figure out that they believe that the demolition of the house on the mayor's land, um, the Dorian family's house or property, whatever, the structure that was on the mayor's land may have awoken the spirit somehow, because that's the only reason they can figure out why it started again after not being active since the 1960s, after this guy disappeared in the 1960s. Um, and they figure out that they need to dredge up the body from the swamp, obviously, like you said, salt, salt and burden. Um, and then, uh, then Dean and Cassie start making out and yeah. Sam talks awkwardly about it, which is Yeah, I like how both funny. of those like, Dean and Cassie have a good makeout session and they just, they just start going at it. I actually didn't mark, I didn't comment anything about Sam on there. But I had I Sam, really I had Sam coughing awkwardly. Ha. Yeah. I also come, I really like the use of the word dredge. I mean, dredge. I don't know what else you would call like pulling up a body from a swamp, but it's just a good word. I like the it's word dredge. It's a good word. It is a good so, one. So they get to the swamp. Or they go, yeah, they go, they're pulling the truck from the swamp. Sam wants uh, yeah. to. So before, mm -hmm. so thing on them pulling up the truck from the swamp. Mm -hmm. Okay. So apparently even though it was snowy, it was also really fucking muddy. Yeah. So what we don't see when that tractor is pulling it out, there were also two other tractors that were pulling that tractor out. So, cause the mud was so deep, like that one tractor couldn't do it, which is probably why my dad is not checking out our cows. Because my, my dad is at the ranch right now, which is also okay. covered in snow. And yeah. Texas cows are not snow cows. We're, no. They're they're not furry. They, they'll make do. They'll live. But right. I was like, how are the cows? He was like, I'm not leaving to go check on them. I'll get stuck. And I'm like, you have a tractor. Just take the tractor out and check my damn cows. But uh, this is probably why. Think. But yeah. yeah um, so. So after they did that, though, so apparently this is an 18 hour shoot and it was all muddy. And after that, all the uh, people who were there shooting had a big old mud fight. So oh, just picture like fun. all of them, like with the tractors and throwing <laughs> mud. All right, all right, go on. Yeah, so um, while they're while they're getting the truck out of the swamp, they're talking and uh, Sam wants Dean to admit that he's still in love with Cassie. Um, well, and then they pull a body out of a truck because that's the kind of like life they have. <laughs> and so anyways, uh, but while they're getting out to get ready to burn it, the phantom truck shows up. Uh -oh. bum, bum, bum. So anyways. Actually, I thought it was really funny because Sam me is like jinxing and Sam's like, think that'll do it. And then the truck shows up. So yeah, I'm exactly. poor writing, but also funny. Um, so Dean's like, oh man, I guess the spirit and the truck are one thing and we we're going to have to burn it. Like Sam's like, how the fuck do you burn a truck? And which is a good thing. I did not actually investigate this. It's probably a good thing to look at, but I don't know. Do you know how to burn a truck? How do you burn, burn metal? A, a whole I mean, truck. It, 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 uh, jet fuel? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> sorry, bad, bad joke. Uh, I, I don't have an answer. I mean, it may have to be really fucking hot. And I don't think like your standard, like I'm starting a fire next to a swamp is going to qualify. As that yeah, no, it's like, obviously it's wet. So not only do you have like a truck, you have a wet truck and wet metal truck. I was like, I don't know, like just fucking figure it out. Like, oh, yep. No, sorry, Dean. Uh, so Dean leads the truck away with baby and we get chased. 
<laughs> yeah, and like the idea is just mostly like buying time and getting the truck away from wherever else. Um, or and so the idea trying- is getting a good chase. Well, that too. <laughs> so Sam's reading a map and they are trying to figure out where to go and the fucking truck taps baby and they don't show mm. a lot of damage from that and I was pissed. Yeah, not I was that real they, mad. Not that I didn't show damage, but I'm just saying you got a big ass metal truck and a metal bumper slash nice black paint job there's gonna be a fucking mark but that's just yeah but also too. my my note says the son of a bitch truck rear ends baby yeah <laughs> damn you racist truck stop rear ending baby yeah it was not good you're gonna damage the trunk and that would be bad um, that's right he was hitting trunk oh yeah. no this is probably time for a team trunk team trunk team trunk team trunk yeah so uh yeah we were not happy about that so, yep, um, so anyway, so they, he's telling him these crazy directions. Uh, Sam's telling Dean these crazy directions. Dean's like in the middle of fucking nowhere. And he tells him to turn down the street and to just stop at exactly seven tenths of a mile, which did happens to be, I did look and I was like, that there's no way I was like first because I didn't watch where it started and it was like there was no way that he was on zero when it started it's anyways, not it nothing. it's not right no it's, it's off it's like over two miles but I uh, I'm honestly that's one of the things like I'm willing to let that go because odometer shit's hard but yeah it is um uh, yep yeah. so uh, I, my next thing is like we get a game of ghost chicken <laughs> everyone loves ghost chicken ghost chicken yeah, so he's uh sitting there and the truck like starts driving straight towards him. Like he's like game of fucking chicken. He's just sitting there and I was getting a little nervous. But then the right. baby, the baby. Yeah, and like we're not actually not nervous about Dean at all. It's just the car. We're like, please don't hurt the car. And I bet they went through so many of those cars, but anyways. Oh no, they did. Like if you could, I at some point we'll have to go through a thing. I know. I know. All, all the these different shows cars. do whenever they have like a legacy car, they always do that and it breaks well, my heart. But it's also just, you know, the things of how many different cars had to be done for episodes just because, and you'll see, obviously she's a character, yeah. baby is yeah. a character. And so it's, you know, how many different versions of this, probably a very interesting thing to see is like how many actual versions of the Impala, of that Impala rolled off the line and how many got destroyed for this show. <laughs> someday we'll we'll do that do math, math maybe at that. the end and it'll be a sad math we'll, we'll figure that out i don't want to do that math but yeah um so right before the truck hits obviously it doesn't hit baby it disappears like dissipates into the mist and apparently it's because the evil spirit over hollowed ground and it happens to be the exact site where the church that he burned that cyrus apparently burned the fuck down was stood That's yeah so dean that. looks to his right and you can see the remnants of the church mm-hmm. much like the druid temple or whatever so there's no <laughs> there's nobody in, nobody in robes there no but worries. so this is what i said earlier about like oh he bulldozed it like did you just miss a wall what the fuck no. like you bulldozed it and you left like this piece like standing up i'm like i don't know well, why that this is a, i don't know if the church is on the same this is the church where the kids were burned so i don't know if it was the uh, same place the mayor maybe land. but like but what else would the mayor have been break bulldozing? Just, I don't know. I just Unless assumed, he was I just, just like, assumed, like the this family house, house and it pissed him. Yeah, that's what I assumed. It just pissed him off that they bulldozed his house, which I thought was a really weak thing. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess we'll go with that. It is also still just weird. Like, you know, there's just this random one wall standing up of this. Yeah, it's thing. like the little, like the entryway of stone, and that was it at the church. But yeah, there was yep. there was the, the, the Lexus Satanicus was not graffitied on it at least I guess so. I... <laughs> well, um, and apparently Dean was all kind of impressed that this worked, and Sam's like how oh, he thought it might work, and Dean is not happy that he <laughs> not more sure about this being a successful attempt to get rid of. I figured maybe <laughs> crazy truck. I mean, it was yeah. a good guess, Sam. Go, Sam. Like, and that's actually, I, I did appreciate that. Like, I thought that was some good humor. Put it into there. So, good on you guys. Um, it gave me so, anxiety. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? I'd be pissed too. Yeah. Um, I also, in terms of lore, uh, just ghost lore that happens throughout the show and other things. I, what? Like, there was. Like there was nothing of like the ghost children coming out and like eating the truck. The yeah, truck there was no just... tie to that. They were there. They didn't go back to the kids at all. Like it was only about. It was only about the, the church being. The... Ho- it was only about it being hollowed ground and the hollow ground eating the truck. I. 
It was a stretch. I would say lame sauce. Like it's it's just yeah, not. I agree. It's that good. I, I thought I, it was not. A, it was not a good. It was not a good. Uh, at the solution. same time, we got a fun car chase, and so yay for fun car chase. Yeah. Bad writing, good fun car chase. Yeah. Yeah. So we get the guys are getting ready to leave, and and they're at the docks, right? So this yeah, is supposed to be in random. Missouri. So I guess you know the Mrs. Uh, so when I've been in Missouri, trying, I don't know if I've ever seen docks in, I guess Mississippi runs through there. Like it does. Yes, there docks. Yeah. Okay, cool. Docks. All right. Go with it. Yeah, there's like oh, river boats you know, and stuff. One thing I didn't mention was earlier that first scene where, um, not the first scene, but when, the fir- when he was talking to the two dudes, I guess, uh-huh. at the docks, and he was asking us stuff, they're having a seafood boil, and I got real jealous, so they might have a seafood boil, <laughs> and I was like, is this what you just get to have on your lunch break? You just get to go eat, like, a bunch of, like, spicy shrimp, and uh, anyways. Okay, go on, sorry. And I'm, uh, yeah, that's crazy. I could have sworn they had said, yeah, Missouri. I kept swearing I heard them say Mississippi early on. That's so weird. All right. So I think one of the reasons you may think that is when there there are things. So the no, I, rem- I I made a note like I literally wrote down at the beginning of the episode <clears throat> that when Cassie called Dean, he said we're going to Mississippi. Like I wrote that down. That's why I thought maybe it is Mississippi. Uh, yeah, I'm looking it's probably yeah, it's probably like, Mississippi. Online, I'm looking Mississippi. I'm looking at the scripts right now, and the script says Mississippi. Okay. but that was that rough draft so but yeah, also I mean, but we just I, fucked but another up one, this entire episode <laughs> but no but another spot online says uh missouri it says cape girado missouri uh, so, both uh i'll have to go back to um netflix and see what netflix has on there I don't know. Like, if they both start with MIS, I mean, aren't they the same state? Like, they're like, they're pretty close. Thank you. This is this episode is really the most confusing episode we have ever talked about. <laughs> so, and so we're not fun. even hammered. I mean, I'm kind no. of hammered at this no, point. No. I'm, I'm drinking like, hot tea now because I yeah. saw I saw your tea. Yeah, I'm I'm not quite through that bottle of wine. But oh, it's man. getting close. Well, um, well, anyways, we get to okay. we get the wrap up. We get the wrap up make out at this point with dean and cassie at the docks the on the mississippi river somewhere probably um and he's you know you can tell that basically he doesn't want to end but she doesn't really see any hope for them is kind of where it leaves off at their relationship which is fucked up because earlier in the episode they're like no more excuses we'll make it work so it's kind of bizarre that they like it is both had a complete, it's a weird, weird what dynamic. like i don't it's, under it's, it's like a flip for no reason so it went from like, oh, we're in love. We're going to make this work. No more excuses, blah, 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 blah. Okay, thanks for solving my dad's death, uh, deuces. Like, what the fuck? Like, what just happened here? Like, they're both, and they're both like, okay, bye. Like, it's very weird, that dynamic. And I get that they're both, yeah, well, and I'm especially gonna, he's emotionally this available. Is the, yeah, this so is not meant sense. to be a spoiler, but we, I don't think we ever hear from her again. Like, yeah. it's just a oh, random, yeah. random shit. And I... <sighs> Why did you make this such an invested relationship to just be like, <laughs> oh, man, we're done. I'm yeah, really like there's, it doesn't even make like why bother for one episode? It's bizarre. Like at least like she could pop up like in the next episode, make a phone call or something, and that would make more sense than this. Yeah, but maybe whatever. she shows up in his phone contacts later, but <laughs> I it's just I, I don't know. I, I think it's weird. I do think it's I mean, I did like their goodbye. I thought it was nice. Um it was I, and granted you know i would also like her I, was, I mean this is how my relationships would end we're like okay cool like this was really great we had sex and it was awesome for a few days we had a really intense emotional moment we'll talk later and then we just don't talk so or like you know maybe like they get a whatsapp like you know if, like yeah. a few years down the line someone's drunk and they're like hey i miss you and mm-hmm. so you know mm-hmm. those things can happen yeah but, yeah uh, maybe I, 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 I way too much relating to this. <laughs> oh, emotionally available. Like, oh, these people are emotionally unavailable and having a dysfunctional relationship. I can relate. That's what Liz just said. I'm just filing that away. I mean, I mean, they did have good sex in the middle. So it appeared to be at least. Yeah. So, you know, so, I mean, there you go. I guess there's a positive here. <laughs> You're like, shit. I just described like half the things that Liz bitches me about. We had really good sex. And then like, <laughs> we just didn't want to carry it on. Anyway, so, all right. They kiss. The boys head off. 
they're off in the car and I think Sam has you the, there's a good exchange though because Sam's yeah. like you meet someone like her doesn't it make you wonder if it's worth it pulling every putting everything on everything else on hold doing what we do yeah. then I also really appreciate Dean's reaction which is he just put some really terrible sunglasses on oh my god those sunglasses yeah. were so bad yeah it, yeah. even for 2000s they were bad sunglasses they were douchey yeah like they i i don't want to presumerge the name of guy fieri but um, hey no don't you dare but it does kind of look like sunglasses he would wear he is the saint of flavor town we do not besmirch his name i know you do love your we, i know you worship at the saint of flavor town <laughs> but they do look like sunglasses he would wear I'm just uh, his ter- yeah his his yeah, especially when his early career, his terrible fashion. His movie. early, like, yeah, when he was really into the rockabilly shirts with, like, the flames and shit. And, like, those story about that. It's actually kind of funny. If you, like, watch some of his old stuff, he'll talk about, like, why he was wearing that. It's pretty funny. But anyways, yeah. Um, yeah. Tangent You're episode! Right. Guy Fieri That's shirts! All the tangents. All the tangents. And that was my Valentine's Day gift to my husband was a Guy Fieri shirt, just so you know. <laughs> Oh, I think you I think you showed it to me, but it wasn't a Guy Fieri Rockabilly flame shirt because no, I'm sure t-shirt. Dave has it many of those in his closet. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. No, it's just a t-shirt. Diana's like, I burned those to keep warm during the snow apocalypse. <laughs> I don't think I think that polyester would burn real fast and mess Oh up. no, also very toxic. Probably yeah. worse like the treated lumber at Lowe's. Like, don't burn the Guy <laughs> Fieri Rockabilly shirt. It's like you're just die. Oh, oh man. All right. Well, yeah. So, and that's where the episode ends. They they drive off, and and Dean doesn't answer the uh, the emotionally loaded question that Sam poses to him. That's it. Yep. Because that's you know that's Dean. Like, hey, I'm just gonna take all these feelings and shove them into a bottle where they belong. I appreciate that. That's where feelings go. Is that feelings, where they belong? <laughs> feelings belong in a little bottle that you keep in your liver, and then if you drink enough, they release <laughs> from your liver, and then you spew all over your friends, and they're like, "Can you put those back?" And you're like, "Yeah, I will. Just give me, give me a day," and then you just shove them back in, and then everybody goes along their business. So, Woo-hoo. Sure. oh my god so we made it we made, we made it, it through okay it. it's still the same day i think i don't know it, what day it, it is. is it is it's still the same day and um we uh we made it through the episode so there we go um yeah i mean i overall i think our assessment we pretty much we've kind of been saying this through the whole thing so i don't think we need to get too too deep back into it is that the dialogue was solid story could have been good but it was kind of weak sauce so is that kind of where we left it at? I mean, weak sauce. Is yeah, that our is that our new scale? Weak sauce, weak sauce. Weak sauce. Yeah. Yeah. It, like the it story, just, like the aspects of the story were weak, and then it was just not like a well. It didn't feel. It felt like a not well formed story. It was not a well formed story, but we had some fun car chases. Yeah. Just appreciated we had sam lightening the fuck up i appreciated you know i i like it when sam gets a little lighter in his character there's not so just like oh i'm so sad just as dead let's That's find true. dad why are we going to find dad no, so at least true. we ventured off of that for a bit and maybe that's why they they had to like go into the i miss you know i didn't say things like killer truck like maybe there is like wait we haven't had enough sam bitching about how he hates his life um but you know so this is also episode 13 we're halfway through the season so eh, i mean this it's fine to go to our wine scale (laughs) on our on our wine scale of things this is the third bottle episode um it's definitely it's fine it really honestly like as someone who's a rewatcher like this is one i would just skip um oh, wow. unless i want to look at the truck because the truck is fun but i also and like you ruined chase. it yeah. and uh, and car chases are good but and the sex scene is good but the storyline is man yeah <laughs> uh, jeff uh. <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, so I think, are we, is that it? I think that's all we got on this one. Can I go get warm now? Snowpocalypse (laughs) episode. I think you get warm. Can I just go hide under some more covers and hopefully maybe the power will stay on through the night. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. All All right. Well, cheers, jerk. Cheers, bitch. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Devil's Trap Podcast. 
Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Devil's Trap Podcast, Twitter, Devil's Trap Pod, or you can email us, Devil's Trap at Devil's Trap Podcast.com. Don't forget to subscribe, leave reviews, and share it with all your friends. We're available at all your major podcast listening devices, so you can always find us at Devil's Trap Podcast.com. Thanks. Devil's Trap Podcast is a Don't Be a Dick production. Meow. Intro music, arrangement and performance by Dave Cox. Piano arrangement and performance by Bobby Orozco. Meow.